So our vision is to offer the world a renewable energy technology that can be deployed anywhere globally at a cost which does not require any form of subsidy. The technology we're talking about is a deep water uh, offshore wind technology. If the, if the pictures appear familiar to you, you may have seen them on BBC One show last Monday, and if you haven't seen it, it's still available on the iPlayer to the end of this month, and it's quite a good three-minute article. So, good morning. I'm David Ainsworth, uh, the KPS Business Development Director. Um, KPS was founded in 2011. Our pedigree does stretch back to about 2007, as the business was actually formed through the merger of two previous IPs. I joined KPS in 2014 from Siemens. Um, which may appear a dumb move. Why move from Siemens to such a radical technology? Well, um, I, like many of you, may, was quite sceptical about this technology in the first place. But it's obvious that to have an affordable technology, you actually have to have a low mass per tonne for any given renewable. We actually have a technology which slashes the mass by 85% compared with conventional offshore wind. And that's where we get all of our cost savings and everything from. So how does the system work? Well, basically, we have a, a system which flies two kites from one base station. And we have a, the kite flies out. As it flies out, it pulls tether from a drum. The drum rotates, and the drum rotation generates electricity. At the end of that stroke, it basically it flies back to the base station, and the other kite is actually flying out of phase. So we actually get a smooth, continuous output. So how do we compare with... Um, offshore wind. Uh, we've actually had an independent level of cost of energy assessment done. And the assessment basically suggests that we can achieve something like around 40 pounds per megawatt hour, which is 50% of the best projected costs of offshore wind. And lower than the, uh, than the uh, wholesale price of electricity. So offer, we're effectively offering a technology which can actually be developed by um, power offtake agreements alone and not requiring any form of government subsidies. So how do we achieve this? Well, basically, all of our loads are in tension and not bending. So we can use the mass of the materials um, more effectively to actually generate that lower mass. Our drivetrain is lower torque. Torque drives, um, drives mass. So we actually have a lower mass drivetrain and lower cost. Our yield is higher because we fly around twice the height of a conventional 7 megawatt wind turbine, where we're further out of the shear zone and the... Um, the wind is more constant and uh, slightly higher energy. We do actually have a number of uh, airborne wind energy, or what we call airborne wind energy competitors. Um, the best known probably is uh, a company called Makani, which has basically been funded by Google. And then there's uh, Alteros and several other uh, European developers. But currently, we are the only UK developer of airborne wind energy technology, and we actually have lots of key IP which has been patented to actually protect our technology. We appreciate that this technology is going to challenge a lot of the uh, industry beliefs in wind, and there are quite a few barriers to market and uh, acceptance. We've gone a long way in the last four years to address a lot of these barriers. Um, I don't pretend... I don't intend to go through all these today, but um, if anybody's interested, we can actually talk about these challenges to the sector later. So we have a strong management team. Uh, the management team actually has a lot of experience in renewables and the marine industry. And we have a very, very strong group of advisors who have actually come from the um, renewable sector uh, and have got a lot of experience in bringing new technologies to market. We also have a strong uh, list of collaborators. Um, Shell and um, DEC have basically funded this to date. Um, there's a, a range of other um, collaborators that have actually supported us in grant applications over the last um, three or four years as well. So what about the market opportunity? Well, the Global Wind Energy, Energy Council market predictions suggest that um, over the next 30 years, there's an average of £85 billion pounds worth of new wind being installed annually. This doesn't include the, the, um, the repowering of arrays after 20 years, and it doesn't include the cost of spares for those arrays themselves. So since 2011, KPS has invested over £3 million pounds to build and demonstrate this 40 kilowatt prototype you can see. Um, that money has come from DEC and the Energy Entrepreneurs Fund, and also from, um, from Shell. We now plan to move forward and build a 500 kilowatt pre-commercial demonstrator. 
at the end of this development, we believe that there is a opportunity to sell this, sell this as a product as well. Our ultimate vision is to build a three megawatt offshore, pro, uh, offshore device. The early market for the three megawatt device will be repowering existing offshore wind turbines, where basically we take the towers off and the drivetrains off, and we refit those with, um, with a kite system. Our foundation loads are 75% lower um, than conventional wind, so we believe that uh, we can get another 10 to 20 years life out of those existing foundations. The final three, three megawatt product will be a floating deep water solution. Our financial modeling shows that um, we'll be generating revenue by about 2021, 20, sorry, by about 2020, we'll be cash neutral by 2021, and we will have repaid all of the uh, investment by 2025. This funding round is proposed to be the first of three. Um, the ideal exit for any in investors in this round would be an OEM acquisition at the end of this um, phase, and that's everybody's dream. Whether that's achievable, we'll just um, we'll have to see. Other revenue streams could be from parts of the technology we're developing. We actually have a patented novel winch. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm sorry, I've just been shown the red card. Um, but basically, yeah, thank you for listening. Um, and we're keen to talk to anybody uh, about the technology at the end of this, uh, um, later, on to, later on today. Sorry, thank you.